Hello everyone, this is D-Fang. Welcome back. I know it has been a little while and I apologize for that. But here we are. Um, I went to the Flying Frog uh, Shadows of Brimstone Wave 2 pickup for Kickstarter materials uh, in Seattle. That was on uh, June 24th, uh, 2017. Uh, and so uh, I took a little bit of video. Um, I didn't get any interviews. I didn't uh, really get much in the way of uh, anything worth uh, keeping audio for. So uh, what you're going to see is a few videos of um, what was going on there um, uh, with the sound kind of turned off. And I'll, I'm going to provide some commentary on uh, what it was that, uh, that you're going to be looking at. Um, there are going to be a few sections here. Uh, and I'll explain a few things. I did talk off camera with uh, Scott Hill um, and uh, got a little bit of information on a few things. So uh, I hope you enjoy it uh, and uh, let me know uh, if there's anything else uh, I, you know, you'd like me to talk about um, and maybe try to expand on more. And uh, let's uh, let's get to it. So I did arrive a little late to the event, uh, not too late, but a little late. Um, so a lot of things were already in progress, a lot of demo games were already being played. Um, so here we have this kind of cool uh, Shadows of Brimstone Tower uh, structure uh, that was there. I thought I'd take a picture of it. All right, and then in the back area they had the store uh, where you can see they had packs uh, of various uh, expansions, uh, encounters, artifacts uh, for, you know, derelict ship, blessed waste, no man's land, uh, things like that. Uh, pause it if you uh, feel the need. Uh, they had some Tron Hunters. They actually had a couple copies of Fortune and Glory, which uh, is out of print, so that was pretty exciting. I was able to pick up some of those for some friends. Now they have another side here. They had some specialized uh, extra characters. So Sergeant Bunker, the Void Magus, the Generalissimo, uh, and uh, what the Grand Shaman uh, figures. Some more bags of Darkstone, crates and barrels, stickers, modeling supplies, some more pads, obviously, and Hellberman and Swamp Slugs. At the checkout counter, they had some nice art and this really cool giant guardian that had been made by uh, one of the Flying Frog folks. Now we got the display case. This year is the 10 year anniversary of Last Night on Earth. Pretty exciting. And there's a sign for Dice Fest, which I will talk about later. So here's the display case with various awesomely painted miniatures. Um, as some of those. Uh, well, actually, I should say some of them are painted. Um, not all of them, but the, this level certainly is uh, painted miniatures. Okay, and down here we got some Forbidden Fortress miniatures. Let you guys take a good look. Obviously, the quality of uh, and detail on the Flying Frog miniatures has gotten so much better um, over over the, the past year or two. Uh, they've learned quite a lot of, of using the uh, more rigid uh, plastics and resins um, rather than the typical board game uh, soft plastic that they're using in you know Last Night on Earth and uh, their other games. It's very cool, very cool. Very nice burrower. So, very impressive. Here we have the Blessed, uh, sorry, the Chadara. I keep saying Blessed Waste. Uh, I believe it was uh, a Chadara uh, demo with the trenches. And uh, I did not actually spend a lot of time, time here. Uh, there were the characters, um, so they were using the new characters, so the Jargano native, um, we had 
had the uh, the shaman. You can see the bear figure there. Uh, and the bottles. They had the gambler. Tell there. Oops, uh, don't mind my head. So there's the gambler. Somebody had the gambler sheet. Uh, and that was the wandering samurai. So all the other characters. And you can see the fury tokens that he had as they built up fury. Then they had the derelict ship table where some folks were uh, on the derelict ship. Uh, again, we're kind of looking at uh, the Darkstone Shaman. Another picture uh, of some of their cards. Uh, you had the female, obviously, Wandering Samurai. Somebody was playing the female version. You can see some of the, the models there that were going on. They got some Necronauts and uh, one of those, I don't remember what those, those bulbous uh, machines are. So there you got the Jargano native. Oops, and the Gambler as well. Uh, I think you'll see a, a theme there. Uh, but you can see the tiles. It's kind of unusual. It's a, it's a circular tile, room tile. And here's some uh, an additional look at some of the derelict ship figures with Necronauts and, and uh, said I don't know what those other mechanical things are. Uh, but some other character models. You got some of the masters or whatever. Um, And last but not least, Forbidden Fortress. I know a lot of people are uh, interested in that. So here you have the monk, the traveling monk. Um, you've got the assassin. And uh, you can see the, their acidic tentacles. And I don't know, remember how you pronounce that, but some hair. <laughs> Razor whip hair. Uh, enemy uh, that they are fighting. Um, I watched a little bit. I did not get to play. Um, but uh, if you kind of see, you know, there's a sorceress. Kind of seen Gavin on the uh, various forums has, uh, was playing. He was playing the monk there. So uh, he can certainly tell you about it um, in more depth as he actually played it. Uh, there's the, uh, the warrior. go and they uh, it looked like a lot of fun um, it looked like they were having a lot of fun uh, certainly some different elements um, but uh, you know Gavin had had described it as a, a same engine uh, you know different a different ride so uh, it was a lot it looked like it was a lot of a lot of fun and a challenge uh, they had some trouble with it All right now I got some close-up looks at some of the, some of the other things um, beyond the game board, some of the cards, uh, some of the models. Kind of see <coughs> a bit more some of the, some of the detail on some of the uh, other models that weren't on the table. They're pretty cool guys, uh, you know, with the basket hats, uh, lightning coming out. Uh, oh yeah, then there's the Harianago Her Her that they were fighting. Magic cards, uh, deck of cards. All right, and let's take another kind of look at uh, the rest of the board, some of the map tiles that they're doing, the models uh, as they are playing a little bit here. And you got kind of some acidic tentacles. They they actually spit acid at you, um, which is kind of cool. So they've got a ranged attack if they can't uh, can't reach you. Uh, yeah, and I said it was it was a challenge for them. Okay, obviously, these are first level characters, and you know, first char level characters in Shadows of Rome, so, uh, usually have kind of a tough time. Uh, so, uh, but they said they they all seemed seemed to have fun. I had fun uh, watching uh, them play. So, uh, you know, but I I like watching watching Rome, so, uh, and most games, uh, especially if the people are, are having having fun. Um, 
lots of trying to figure out who who was getting attacked by whom, with the, especially with the ranged attacks. And uh, I believe the Harry Harry Agao uh, changes targets every turn. So, uh, but seemed to really like the assassin <laughs> and wanted to attack uh, the assassin every turn. Actually, I guess it was completely random on who uh, of the group got attacked each turn, which included the previous target. So. Uh, much fun was had by all. And here at the back of the room, one of the Flying Frog crew members had brought his collection of brimstone figures. And these are hand-created hand, hand custom cases. Um, and it was just super impressive. So um, I don't know how good a quality. They looked much better than they do on, on the video here if you can believe it but uh everything was just so so awesome and you can see he kind of cut out foam in the shapes um so they all fit and i'm just gonna you know bear with me if you want uh, i'm actually just kind of gonna gonna kind of go over the whole uh case i mean he's got geez various factions of different uh, of the different enemies and different you know in different color in their different colored paint schemes got the harbinger there um, it was just super impressive um, just the sheer depth of, of everything I mean look at that case I mean you can just see just the amount of stuff uh, that he's that he's got and, and the details of these so you've got you know necrodots uh, bandits and I'm just gonna you know I'm gonna go through them. Um, you know, said feel free to pause if you if you want to look at one a little bit more, uh, you know, carefully. Um, I didn't want to spend too much time on it. I didn't want to bore you all um, by you know stopping and pausing on on too many um, specifically. But and I also didn't want to bore you by showing you know because there's the sheer number of these of these figures. It's just uh, amazing. Uh, and the detail uh, that he has put on them. And I said, I know you're not getting really great detail, uh, you know, from the camera. It's a lot easier to see it in person. But, uh, you know, I, I thought you guys might enjoy seeing uh, all these models. And they might give you some ideas for, you know, painting up some of your own. If you wanted to do a, you know, a paint scheme that did certain, uh, certain styles or certain types of, uh, of models. Um, you know, it was all very, very impressive. You got the, the Hell Cannon crew uh, there, which was pretty cool. Uh, you know, and he had, he had them labeled as well. Uh, you know, corpse piles, you got some obstacles. Uh, and there, oh, look at that. So cool. Again, you know, just kind of look at this, you know, the, the pack mule, and you know, and this is, you know, this is what three. There were like three cases of these things. There was a bunch of hero models. Um, you know, there were some henchmen. Uh, you know, the shaman. There's a blacksmith. You know, henchmen again. Some forms for the wolves, and they're not. Uh, Rancher, Marshal, Prospector, none. Uh, you know, they were just, the, the, the quality of the painting was so great as well. You know, just not to mention just just how impressive the case it was. Um, and what, uh, you know, how everything fit uh, into this. So, again, I, you know, I apologize if this is a little boring for people. Skip ahead if you if you want, or come back. Oh, you got some vampires, which we haven't seen a lot of. So over here, you got some, some vampires, and uh, should be some werewolves coming up as well. So things from the, uh, painted from the mission packs. Um, some hell vermin, I think. Uh, there's some werewolves. Uh, it was very, uh, you know, I, I was blown away by uh, by this. And I said, in this case, was was custom made. Um, uh, the Hellfire Succubi, 
uh, yeah, and unfortunately, uh, I didn't really, I wasn't really able to get a good look at the uh, in video of the back, uh, the back side of the of the case. Um, but he had painted some, uh, you know, some sigils and stuff um, related to uh, to brimstone. So, uh, the, you know, the cases themselves were <laughs> were essentially works of art. Um, so Black Fang tribe. Um, and there's some Tradarin. Again, he had multiple factions, so, uh, you know, there are different colors and, uh, you know, raiders and, uh, so not just, not just the different models, um, but, you know, the, the different factions for, uh, for the enemies. As you can kind of see, Liberation Army, he's, he, he had them somewhat labeled anyway, uh, Trinarian mutants, he had them broken out. Uh, Trinarian legionnaires, He's the lieutenant, the raiders. Uh, it was all uh, pretty. And then yet another, uh, yet another case uh, of miniatures. With, uh, you know, you got flesh drones here, um, torture drones. There's a gar. Guardian. He had he had a damaged guardian and a regular guardian. Um, you know, uh, there's the shaman, the flesh stalker, uh, sand kraken, swamp Goliath. I mean, you know, undead outlaws. He had them. Some dark some brutes. He, he he you know even said he, even the variations. He had some specific models uh, for some of the variations that you could you could run into. Which was all pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Um, and the, the sheer quantity uh, and quality of, of these models. So, uh, you know, and I and I know I'm repeating myself here. I mean, it, there's there's a lot of models to go to and a lot of the case. So, you know, some of this is is just filler, and I, I apologize. Mute me <laughs> if you feel the need, uh, and just enjoy, uh, just enjoy the models. Um, uh, I just wanted to g show you guys everything that he had. Uh, you know, different colored stranglers, they called them. Uh, you know, he had, he had painted in different colors. Um, different color hell bats uh, for, different, uh, for different things. Uh, it was impressive. So, bog bats, right? See, he calls them bog bats and hell bats. And, uh, we're not quite done yet, though, but, I mean, just look at Look at that. Again, I just kind of want to give you the, the, the sheer size of that. And there's a Hydra uh, with his. Notice one of its heads has actually been chopped off, and you could actually see he had actually painted it uh, with the head being off. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and then, so now you've got the swamp slashers as opposed to the other slashers which he does have um, as you can see he's got some different colored slashers um, gorge slashers uh, it, it was I, I can't say enough about just how impressive uh, the cases were and all the models in the cases um, I just felt that I had to show this to you uh, got some various uh, Undead, and there are some terrors, some regular terrors. Uh, there are some snow terrors come up, I believe, and more of the hungry dead painted in various some spirits, some zombie like, some more of the army. Uh, and there's the And here's some snow terrors and the tentacles. Uh, we are almost done. Um, now they've got the. Uh, let's see some more of the. Now he's got the all the tribes of the serpent man, which we we know there are many, uh, and they have their different colors and patterns as well. And certainly, he's got some different color tentacles for corrosive, some regular. Um, he's got. You can see he has the detail of some dark stone. 
painted, you know, highlighted on some of the shields and some of them don't. certainly a, a treat uh, and I apologize if you, if you don't like uh, the amount of time I spent on this but, uh, on showing this uh, I know it's all probably almost as much as the rest of the video uh, but there you go all right and sort of last but not least um, the kind of the big news uh, at the wave 2 was the announcement of dice fest 2017 um, October 28th and 29th for all of you Flying Frog game fans. Um, this is going to be uh, basically a Flying Frog convention, a Flying Frog Con. Uh, it's going to be in, in the Seattle area, just like uh, I think I think it's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's even in the same space as they just held uh, the Wave 2 pickup event. And uh, there is early registration uh, early bird registration going on for uh, I believe the next month um, and that is thirty dollars and uh, after that it will the price will jump up to uh, it's either forty or forty five dollars uh, and that is for both days um, I don't think there is uh, an individual day uh, ticket but uh, they plan on having lots of events to celebrate um, the Flying Frog Games. I mean, this is the 10-year anniversary of Last Night on Earth. Um, they, you know, had uh, announced that, brought that to Gen Con 10 years ago. And uh, so they're going to uh, do a bunch of things, um, like I believe they were going to do... Uh, gather together, uh, try to gather, gather the original uh, cast of characters of Last Night on Earth in their costumes. Uh, there will be some live music from uh, Mary Beth, I believe, and, and other musicians playing some of the soundtracks live, um, or at least portions of them. <coughs> there will also be lots of, lots of games um, there uh, with uh, of the Flying Frog games. Um, I believe they're going to pack in some of their uh, famous, or at least quasi-famous, uh, 3D tables um, that they have been bringing to Gen Con. They're going to have a bunch of those in there um, for people to play on, and they'll have some scenarios uh, for the various games, uh, Last Night on Earth, Shadows of Brimstone, uh, Fortune and Glory, things like that. Uh, they hinted that they very well might have some new material or new scenarios, um, things like that, f for uh, some of the various games. Uh, and some of those uh, might be uh, available for purchase. Um, there were no specific details. Uh, so, you know, can't guarantee uh, that, that is the case. I, I certainly would expect that there would be you know are going to be some some new scenarios uh, at least for playing there uh, I even if there's not not something that's necessarily uh, to to purchase um, oh I should also mention if you early bird registration uh, you also get uh, a promo figure which uh, they were keeping hush hush but uh, you're gonna get a free uh, commemorative model uh, of some sort uh, they didn't say what for what game, uh, if it's even for a particular game, um, but the, you will be getting a miniature. So uh, to sign up, uh, you need to contact uh, admin at flyingfrog.net. Uh, uh, it will be will call only. Um, they're not going to send tickets out uh, to you, but you will be able to pick them up there uh, at the door. Uh, as of right now, um, that is that is uh, what I was told uh, is the plan. So, so uh, I am very excited. Uh, as is my wife, I will be there. Um, you know, uh, if you're at all interested in Flying Frog games, so if you've played them, uh, I recommend you come out. Let's let's support them. Uh, you know, have a great turnout. Um, you know, and just have fun. Uh, playing, uh, playing their games uh, of all sorts. So uh, that is kind of the big, 
uh, to do hubbub. Um, you know, they are not doing a lot to necessarily promote it. Um, you know, they're they're not sure. You know, ha this being the first uh, ever. Uh, you know, they don't want it to explode too big. Uh, you know, but they'd also you know want people to show up. So. Uh, you know, it's going to be a fine balance for them. It's something new that they're trying, um, uh, and we want to support them for that. So I, I would highly recommend, if you are at all interested um, and think you can get to uh, Seattle in, uh, on October 28th and t or 29th, uh, that you contact Flying Frog about it. Um, again, that was admin at flyingfrog.net. Uh, and give them, you know, a ask them about it. Uh, get signed up. Uh, if you sign up early bird, uh, you will have a fun promotional miniature of some sort uh, to commemorate it. Uh, and you get to play, uh, and then you'll get there, and uh, you know, you'll save some money for the early bird. Uh, and then we'll have a lot of fun uh, playing some some flying frog games. And that is uh, about all I have here for the Wave 2. Uh, I will certainly try to answer any, any other questions uh, that people might have. I did not play any games. Said traffic kept me uh, a little bit later than uh, I wanted. Games were already uh, in play, um, so I just kind of watched the games for a little bit, um, You know, spoke to people. Uh, took some video uh, of some various things, um, you know, pause, it, you know, the video if you want to try to get a better look, uh, but feel free to, you know, give a comment or, or you know, or ask uh, about something if you want. If I can't answer, uh, I'm sure we'll find somebody, uh, somebody who can, because uh, there were several, uh, you know, a number of people there. Um, oh, and the FAQ came out. Uh, the morning of, uh, which was very exciting. I I still need to kind of absorb everything there. I know there's going to be some differences in what I, you know, have been playing uh, with. So, uh, but those are good things. Um, you know, long awaited with bated breath was an unofficial FAQ. And thank you, Flying Frog, for making the time, finding the time uh, to get us an FAQ. Uh, they really do want everybody to enjoy their games as much as they can. Uh, they really do, uh, you know, these guys just really love the game and their games, um, and they really want them, to, you know, everybody to have fun playing them. So uh, that is definitely their goal. So thanks all, and, uh, you know, be on the lookout uh, for me to start posting regularly again. Uh, Real Life has gotten mostly out of the way now, uh, and uh, a new series should be coming soon. Um, so I'm going to tease right here. So uh, there will be a new Shadows of Brimstone series coming up uh, shortly. So enjoy, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again later.